Hey Nerdy Knitters, hand knit dishcloths are great things to knit. They're inexpensive, sturdy, and if you add some scrubby yarn, they're perfect for even the toughest jobs. We're going to knit two scrubby dishcloths today. One, just a small simple rectangle that you can use for those tough jobs like cleaning a cast iron pan. And then an everyday dishcloth where we add some scrubby yarn to one side of it to give it a little extra scrubby power. Before we dive in, I just want to say, hey, I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer, and my goal is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. We'll start with the easiest project, a small square scrubby. You're going to need your scrubby yarn. I'm using this Red Heart yarn. And look at the ball band and look for the needles that are recommended for that particular yarn and just use those needles. And you'll also need a tapestry needle for weaving in the ends. The first step is deciding how many stitches to cast on, so just look at the gauge measurements that are on the ball band for the yarn. This yarn has 16 stitches in 4 inches, so I'm just going to divide that to find out how many stitches it has in 1 inch. Now I'm going to measure my hand to decide how wide I want my scrubby. I want my scrubby to be about the width of my hand to make it really easy to hold, and my hand is about 3 inches wide. So I'm going to multiply that 1 inch stitch gauge by 3 inches, and that will tell me how many stitches I need to cast on for my small rectangle scrubby. We're going to hold our yarn double for this small scrubby, so you can either wind off enough to make a second ball or use both ends of the ball and then just start casting on using your favorite cast on method. I'm using the long tail cast on method here, but you can use whatever cast on you like. So after you've measured your hand and decided how many stitches you want to cast on, divide that yarn so you have two strands to work with and then just start casting on the amount that you'd like for your scrubby. After you've cast on your stitches, you can just start knitting. Now it can be a bit tricky at first because you've got that double strand of yarn and this yarn isn't exactly the easiest to knit with, but once you get that first row, you'll find it's a lot easier, so you just start knitting and just keep knitting until it's as big as you want it to be. And once it's reached the size that you like, then it's time to bind off, just using a basic bind off. Knit those first two stitches, pull that first stitch over the second stitch, and then repeat that across the row. Knit another stitch, and pull the first stitch over the second, until you've bound off all of the stitches. And the last step is just to weave in those ends, and they have a tendency to stick together, so just weave them in through a few stitches, and that yarn is pretty grabby, and they will just hold there and stay right in place. Now let's take a look at that second everyday dishcloth. I'm going to start by just using my regular worsted cotton yarn for a dishcloth. Then I'm going to add that scrubby yarn later to finish off one edge of this dishcloth. But alternatively, you could start with both. It might actually be a little easier. And then when you're about ready to begin the halfway point and decrease, you're going to stop using the scrubby yarn and just use the regular yarn. That's just another option, or you can follow the tutorial that I have right here. So you'll need your supplies. You're going to need that scrubby yarn. I'm using Red Heart. And then you'll also need some dishcloth yarn, like this Handicrafter cotton. And then the knitting needles and the recommended size for the yarn. Just check the ball band for the needle size and just use that, or go up or down a size depending on how tightly or loosely you knit. And then you'll need a tapestry needle for weaving in the ends. Now if you don't already have an everyday dishcloth pattern that you like to use, then here's my recommended pattern. This is the everyday heirloom dishcloth. This is the one I'm using. It's very simple to do. It's really a beginner, easy level knitting pattern. So once you know how to knit and do all of the basics, you can definitely knit this dishcloth. So you can look down below and get the link for this and then join me right for the next bit. We start by casting on, and this one starts at one tip, so we only need to cast on just three stitches. I'm using the long tail cast on method, but any method that you like will work here. And then after you've cast on those three stitches, you're going to work just a few rows, just on those three stitches. After that, you're going to begin increasing, and each increase row is the same. You knit two, you yarn over, and then knit to the end of the row. In this case, it's just one stitch, but it will keep growing. And then you repeat that process for every row until the dishcloth is as wide as you'd like it to be.
And then once it's as wide as you'd like it to be, it's time to start working the decrease section. Knit one, knit two together, yarn over, and then knit two together again. So you're decreasing by one stitch on every row and then knit to the end of the row. And you continue this process for just a few rows and then we're going to introduce our scrubby yarn. And after you've worked about three or eight rows, depending on how wide you want your scrubby section to be, you're just going to introduce that scrubby yarn along with your regular cotton yarn. So you'll be holding the strands double, one strand of each, and continue the same pattern. Knit one, knit two together, yarn over, and knit two together again, and then knit to the end of the row. And you'll continue this process until you have just a few stitches remaining. And then there's a few more steps just at the end that you have to do. When four stitches remain on your needle, the next step is to knit one, knit two together, and then knit one. And that is the last step. And then you just bind off those final three stitches. and just use a standard bind off, knitting the first two, pulling the second stitch over the first, and then knitting the next stitch and pulling that first stitch over the second and then pulling that yarn tail through. And then the last process is just to weave in your ends. Now you know two simple ways to add some scrubby power to your hand knit dishcloths. If you're looking for more great dishcloth tutorials, I've put together a short playlist for you right here. Just click right there and I'll meet you over in that next video.